efforts, as she said, are underway to bring fugitive Tabo Pesta and his accomplices back to South Africa. Pesta, his partner, Nandipa Makutumana, and one other person who is said to be a Mozambican national were arrested this past weekend in the northern part of Tanzania, apparently on their way to Kenya after fleeing South Africa. Pesta escaped prison last year after faking his death. Correctional services officials and private security employees are among those who've been accused of helping Pesta break out of prison. Now, considering the scale of the network involved in his escape and how important, therefore, is securing Pesta once he's back here at home, let's bring in our crime expert, Professor Kolufelo Rakubu from the Tswane University of Technology. She's joining us now in studio. For the first time, I have you in studio, Prof. Nice meeting you. Nice We've meeting spoken you. before on Zoom yes. about similar cases. Yeah. Welcome to our studios in Johannesburg. Now, Prof, I mean, from what you, this reads like a thriller of, of sorts. I mean, um, surviving over nearly a year, nearly a year mm. out of prison, engineering or what, manipulating your way out of prison and living the life from what we've had and now finding yourself in the northern part of Tanzania. Speak to a very well-oiled uh, uh, criminal network. Mm -hmm. When he comes back, what should be the top things that the, the South African authorities should have in mind to make sure that we don't have round two? First thing first, um, with the whole thing, let's move away from a, a prison escape to a walk out. Because as revelations come so forth, we realize that no, Tabo walked out. Tabo didn't escape. Because there are people mandated to make sure that gates are locked. We all understand South African prisons. How many gates is, was he supposed to pass before escaping? Where did he break for us to say he... he no, it's a walkout. Which bars did he break? Which bars which and which, which camera did he turn off and so forth? So, and what I want to challenge South African is, we're not even sure when he walked out. We've just been told now because of the whole media yeah, outbreak. We are told that it was in May last year. It, it, it might not be in May last year. It might have been be prior, but there's a story with the building burning or fire, right? That is why we are taken to May. But in true fact, Tabo might have been out way before or might have had access to uh, communities prior to that. It's just that now they need to come up with concrete story. That is why GS4 cannot come on board to tell us what really happened. But for Tabo to come to South Africa, first thing first, he needs to be safe. This whole saga implicates many, many people. His safety first, because should he depart, we are going to lose what really, really transpired. Because I also believe that this is one of many. Yeah, there, were, there must have been many people indeed many people. who were involved in this to make it, to make the walk out, as you say. Yeah, the no, prison the walk out by Tabo Pesta, whenever it happened to be as easy as it, we are told it, it was. Yes. And, and some of those people might not want to be known. They might not be. And, and it implicates even our system. It exposes our system. Like I said, Tabo's story is one of many. This was just an unfortunate situation. Or the Kabali, or the group of people that he associated with were so fleshy that somehow, somewhere, they had to reveal, unknowingly so, because they got so comfortable with the whole thing. Does securing him, I mean, understanding, as you said, the prison system, the correctional services yeah. system, mean he should be held in isolation, he should be guarded 24 hours, uh, he can't be seen with anybody? I mean, what kind of safety measures do you think will be applicable and appropriate in terms of the law? With the current measures, he's not a very difficult person to deal with. He, his associate, the level of organized syndicate that he's working with is very smart and connected. Him personally, he can be held at any facility. However, we need now to reflect back on what? Privatization does not deal with corruption. Remember we used to think... Oh, this when, was a private prison. This is a private prison, and South Africans felt like, okay, privatization will deal away with a lot of things. But now, it's the same old story. Mm. So he must come back safe, and South Africa should get to know how it started during his walk out. Who opened how many gates and when? And, and, and 
what about the, the girlfriend, Nandi Pamakudumana? I mean, I mean yeah. her safety as well would, would also be taken into consideration. What are your views? Her safety should be taken into consideration, um, but she represents a whole different perspective of a female offender. Tell me. Sophisticated one, smart. Because at some point, if Tabo was in prison, who forced her to be in possession of cops to, 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 to fabricate story, to lie? Who forced her? And again, with them crossing the border, it exposes South Africa's challenge with, is, with issues of territorial integrity. But it's not just our borders. I mean, for, no. for you to have gone to, to Tanzania mm -hmm. with a Mozambican, allegedly a Mozambican accomplice, we'll find yeah. out as soon as the, one day they're back in the country, they're facing the music in court. Uh, you have to go to Zimbabwe, for example, as a, yes. you have to go back maybe into Mozambique, and then because Tanzania has yeah. borders with Mozambique. I, I mean, there are so many border posts. Now, we're dealing with sophisticated sophisticated criminals, right? They, under, they understand vulnerability of African borders, where there are issues of resources, salary issues, and what? Pressure from organized crime. They studied the whole thing, and this is not the first time I guess they're doing it. They understand issues of discretionary powers. There's someone at the border, a, a poor custom official, who can be bought. So now everybody has a price at the border. So we're not safe. Yeah, so the safety issue, yeah, we're not safe. The safety issue is a bigger one beyond the, the Tabo Pesta as yeah. a person and the Nandipa uh, uh, Makuduma. Now we have this trial that started today. Mm -hmm. And Slindelo Masigan was telling us that it's going to resume on Monday. It involves the father of Nandi Pamakudumana and the former G4S employees. Now, from that side of things, mm. I guess it's going to be important for us to watch this case very closely. Yes. It might reveal to us the extent of yes. the network. Yeah, we need to understand the extent. Now, imagine if the father, uh, whom South Africa felt so much sympathy um, when the whole story broke out, now to be accused of murder. How many people are accused of murder? And who... Because remember, we're talking of corpses, they don't even have names. We don't know who those people are. We this might even never know. And if it's three, three might even be six, because these are professional criminals. They've been doing this for years. And yeah. we're talking about a year. It might not be a year. Yeah, they've been charged as well with fraud and defeating the ends of justice. It's a fascinating story. From your experience as a crime expert, I mean, have we seen something like this recently in South Africa? I mean, we have so many other bizarre crime stories we've, that have come to the fore. You know, I work out, this is a masterpiece. This is a masterpiece. He didn't break any window. <laughs> this is the first of its kind, which is going to contribute to literature pertaining to prison breaks, literature pertaining to the nature and extent or the type of uh, female offenders or the nature of... Uh, the offenders like Tabo Besta, now it's going, it's going to contribute significantly to a whole um, literature on prisons and the functionality of prisons and necessity for reviews, policy reviews. It also touches on the borders. It touches on organized crime. So researchers are supposed to have a field day in South Africa or in the world regarding the mm. vulnerability and of South Africa. apparently had more than 14 ID IDEs. I mean, 14 identities. Home affairs. I mean, I don't, you start to, to, to widen yeah. that whole thing. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. You. I can I can predict what, uh, uh, two things that uh, South Africans are going to be gripped to to their screens at the the, the day uh, Tabo Pesta and Nandipa Makudumana and their alleged Mozambican accomplice come back to South Africa and they go to court. We're going to be watching and following those proceedings very well. The other thing one can can predict is that somebody is going to come up with some kind of a Netflix series because this is like wow. What is it? A masterpiece of a walkout. Unbelievable. This is South Africa. Crime expert, Professor Kolufelo Rakubu, thank you very much for your time and coming to our studios here on ENC in Johannesburg. And still